It could be that we're already in a recession. It's unlikely that these cryptos are um, safe haven assets. They're not hedge assets. Hey guys, I'm happy to present to you the full interview that was featured in our latest documentary, Inside China, What the Coronavirus Reveals About Crypto. Make sure you check it out. And now let's get to the interview. What's up, YouTube? My name is Jackson. Today, I have the pleasure of welcoming back Professor Campbell Harvey, the inventor of the yield curve signal. Last time, we talked about how Bitcoin could potentially be a safe haven. But apparently, something has changed. And I'm excited to find out what that is. How's it going today, Professor? I'm doing well. Thank you. In our previous interview, the conflict between Iran and the US sparked a discussion about why Bitcoin could potentially be a safe haven asset. One of the key points was that it has no intrinsic value or fundamentals, and therefore is relatively independent from the traditional financial system. On the other hand, Bitcoin is highly volatile, and so far, there hasn't been enough historical data to show how Bitcoin behaves during an economic crisis. You wrote to me yesterday to tell me that the recent price action in the Bitcoin and stock markets is moving your opinion in a certain direction. What's changed? Well, again, uh, cryptocurrencies are, are very difficult uh, to value. Uh, a stock is relatively easy to value. You've got forecasted earnings. Um, you've got some degree of risk that you discount those earnings by, and you get a stock price. A bond, also very simple. You've got a coupon, you've got principal, and, uh, and you basically, you've got the risk of the bond, and you've got a price. But things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, really difficult to think about because there's no fundamental. There's value, obviously, uh, to the network, People value these uh, cryptocurrencies for transactional purposes, for speculation, but it's really difficult to think about the value. And when you start talking about safe haven, uh, it becomes really difficult to think, uh, are these really safe haven assets? Uh, because it's just not obvious and we don't have the history to actually look at it. But as the history kind of expands, anytime you've got a big move in the market, that is the lens that you need to try to figure out what happens to other asset uh, prices. And interestingly, um, it turns out that the cryptos were not a safe haven in this latest uh, episode. Mm -hmm. so, so in which direction is that moving your opinion? So you, you're, you see this as a way of saying that, no, 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 these are not a good place to put your money if the economy is going down. Is that correct? Yeah. So, so a, again, you think about like a stock, and uh, if the economy is going to go into recession, that's bad for the earnings of a company. So it kind of makes sense that the stock price goes down. For a crypto, there's no earnings. Um, so whatever kind of interest in that crypto is likely driven by speculation. So uh, when you've got a situation where we've got what I call a risk-off situation, where people want to de-risk their portfolios to basically dump risky assets and go into less risky assets or safe uh, assets. What we've seen is that it appears that people are dumping their cryptos in the risk-off. And this really suggests that uh, much of the value that's attributed to the cryptos is essentially uh, speculative value. Hmm. So, um, of course, as you probably know, the coronavirus is a global, potentially crisis that is occurring at this point. Um, how does the ongoing saga of the coronavirus compare to the events of the US-Iran conflict in terms of this Bitcoin as a safe haven narrative? Well, like both of them are what I would consider uh, kind of systemic uh, risks. And obviously a pandemic is a bigger uh, risk in my opinion, uh, because whatever will happen with the US and Iran would likely be relatively contained uh, in the Middle East. And, and also, if you look at the series of events of what happened in Iran, the US took out uh, a top general, then there was some kind of mild retaliation. Well, that's kind of small stuff. 
uh, compared to a, a potential global pandemic. And it's basically no escape anywhere in the world uh, from something like that. So this is a much larger risk event. And we're much further along in the risk event. So maybe it was similar uh, at the beginning of January to the situation in Iran, but we're at the end of February. And this is uh, a much bigger uh, event. And, and markets responded. Um, this is a big event, and what's going to happen? Uh, well, economic growth will slow almost by construction. And when economic growth uh, slows, that damages uh, the stock market, it damages all risk assets, and uh, cryptos uh, took a beating as a result. So on January 30th, the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus to be a public health emergency of international concern. I'm declaring a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus. At that time, Bitcoin's price was around $9,500. As major international media outlets picked up the outbreak and began providing nonstop coverage of the spread of the virus, Bitcoin went on to hit its 2020 high of nearly $10,500 in mid-February. One might think that this was because Bitcoin was performing as a safe haven in a time of fear. However, I was looking at the trend of Bitcoin's price during the past month, and it seemed to me that there is a correlation with the trends of the Dow Jones, S&P 500, and NASDAQ in the same time frame. Would you agree? Well, again, um, we need to be careful because correlations can shift through time. But you are correct that, again, this uh, COVID-19, basically it evolves in terms of how big of a risk it actually is. And as we went through uh, February, um, our leaders um, and investors and regular uh, citizens became um, aware that this is like really the possibility of a global pandemic. So the risk was increasing. And you're right, this is exactly what happened. We saw a major sell-off in the stock market where uh, the prices on consecutive days went down 3%. The total drawdown at this point is more than 7%. That is a, a substantial move in the stock market. Now, if these cryptos were safe havens, then you would expect maybe no change in, uh, in their value or maybe even an increase in the value. But that's definitely not what we've seen. Um, the cryptos got battered and uh, dropped by more than 10%. So that suggests to me, in a particular situation of great stress, where people are realizing that there's systemic risk unfolding, the stock market drops as expected, people flee to safe assets, but they didn't flee to cryptos. They fled to the US 10-year bond. Yeah, exactly. And it's, 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 it's very interesting because, you know, Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. It has no connection to the stock market. And yet it's still followed this correlation along with the stock market. Um, what, what, can this tell us anything else about this relationship between Bitcoin and the stock market? Well, what it tells me is that it's unlikely that these cryptos are um, safe haven assets. They're not hedge assets. So uh, essentially the speculators in the stock market, they need to de-risk. Um, that's what risk off is. They need to de-risk. So they sell. The stock market goes down. The, the same people or similar um, in terms of motivation uh, in the crypto complex, they need to sell. They need to de-risk. And that's exactly what we've seen. So, so it's consistent. And again, we need to be careful here because this is only one episode, but it's an important episode. And, and I think that we can learn from it. And this episode suggests that um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, other cryptos are more in the category of risk assets. That means they will move uh, in big uh, systemic events like other risk assets like stocks. Can you just go over one more time why this event in particular is so important? Because you do mention it's only one episode, but why, why is it worth paying attention to this one specifically? Yeah, so if you think about what happens from day to day, 
uh, there's some news here and there. The stock market goes up and down, and it's really hard to interpret. It, it's uh, a mix of information and noise. So it's rare that we actually get a situation where it's really clear. So COVID-19 is a potential pandemic. It's getting worse. Everybody is going to be hit by it to some extent. This is a systemic event. And as a result, people rationally look at this and say, well, uh, GDP is going to take a hit as a result of that. That means these firms are going to take a hit in terms of their profit. Prices are going to go down. I need to de-risk. So this is an opportunity where you've got a large amount of signal and a small amount of noise. So these are opportunities where we can actually learn about the correlation behavior of assets. It's really hard to learn about the correlation behavior when they're up you know, 0.5% or 0.2% or down 0.3%. That's just noise. These are signal events, and we can learn a lot from these signals. So what does that tell us about the type of investor who's invested in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? Yeah, so we know that there's some extremely long-term uh, investors in crypto that are holding for uh, you know, multiple years and will not be swayed by uh, the daily ups and downs of the crypto volatility. But I, I think that ever since um, uh, 2017, there's a large group of investors that are purely looking at a speculative investment. Uh, it's a way to bet, and it's a way to bet that's got very high volatility, which is what they're actually looking for. So what we've seen is consistent with uh, the price being driven by speculation rather than long-term uh, investment. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think there is such a large number of speculators in the Bitcoin market? Oh, it's the volatility. So if you, if you invest in the stock market, the annualized volatility is only about 15%. So you invest in, in Bitcoin, the volatility is more like 90%. So it, it's possible that in a short period of time, you can double your money. Uh, that's not possible investing in stocks. It's not possible investing in uh, commodities like gold. Uh, so this gives investors that really want to speculate um, a large amount of leverage. So they've got a giant upside. So this is very attractive uh, for uh, speculators and people just want to take a bet. So according to data analytics provider SKU, on February 26, over $150 million worth of Bitcoin was liquidated on the trading exchange BitMEX. This was the most seen in 2020 so far. Millions of dollars of long and short positions caused the value of the cryptocurrency to fall to $8,580, a decrease of more than 6%. How does, what role does this event play in your hypothesis of Bitcoin as a risk asset? Can we attribute Bitcoin's uh, recent drop to this liquidation? Or do you see this liquidation more as like an investor getting out of Bitcoin because they see it as a risky asset? So it is true that if somebody dumps uh, a large amount of Bitcoin, that that will cause the price to go down. And that's true for any asset, right? If there's a lot of selling, then the price goes down. So this was a particularly uh, big uh, sale, and it did have a negative uh, effect on price. But I think that it's only part of what's going on. Uh, this, we don't know the exact motivation, but it's certainly consistent with a risk off trade. So given that risk is increased, uh, I need to adjust my portfolio. I need to become more conservative. And that means dumping risky assets, stocks and crypto kind of fit that bill. On February 3rd, the Shanghai Composite Index plunged 8% during its worst single-day drop in nearly five years. The Chinese government was forced to pump $22 billion worth of yuan into the economy in order to stabilize the stock market. 
Would you advise someone in China to buy Bitcoin as a way to preserve the value of their money throughout the coronavirus pandemic? Well, number one, I, I don't give investment advice as an academic. Um, number two, I think that if you look at the data, it is challenging because we don't have that much data. I've made this point before that we, in the entire history of the crypto prices, don't even have a recession, not one recession. So with stocks, we've got the history of recessions back to 1850. But with cryptos, we haven't even gone through one. However, again, I think that we can learn something from these events where there's a realization of risk, as we're seeing with the coronavirus uh, situation. And in this situation, uh, stocks have dropped and so have cryptos. So that's inconsistent with putting your money into cryptocurrencies and thinking, well, that will help us ride out uh, any correction in the equity market or uh, any recession. So I think it would be very risky uh, to transfer your portfolio to cryptocurrencies uh, thinking that that will help you hedge. So would you expect uh, Bitcoin to perform similarly in the scenario of a recession, for example, because uh, as you pointed out to me, the yield curve did once again invert around at around February 18th, I think, somewhere around there, and has since been inverted this whole time. Would you expect Bitcoin to perform similarly and be correlated to the stock market in this way during a recession? What we've seen recently with the yield curve inversion is consistent with the theoretical framework in my dissertation, that people see a potential pandemic. Uh, people see that economic growth is slowing as a result of that and will slow further. And this could actually push us. This could be the trigger uh, that pushes us into a recession. So the yield curve inversion is consistent with that. And in terms of the performance of cryptos during a recession, it completely depends upon how severe that recession actually is. Um, I guess I would... Uh, speculate that if it's a very severe recession, that would be the, the type of thing that we're kind of seeing unfold uh, in February, that people would want to de-risk uh, their portfolio. And de-risking you know, their portfolio would mean uh, liquidating some of their cryptos. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, the, the re a recession will come earlier than you previously predicted due to the arrival of the coronavirus? Uh, yeah, well, that's obviously the coronavirus is not something that uh, the yield curve uh, predicts. Uh, that just as an event, we were already in a slowing growth situation and already headed for uh, what might be uh, a, a mild recession or just a slowdown. So uh, given what we've seen in terms of in many cities, many uh, countries, where economic activity has basically stopped. So it could be that we're already in a recession. I just wanted to go back for a moment to um, what you said, that we could already be in a, in a recession. Could you just go over again what you think the effects are? What do, you think, what do you think the effects will be of the coronavirus on the global economy? So we've already seen that the coronavirus is taking a toll on uh, economic activity. Uh, we, we see it every day uh, in terms of video, empty streets, empty stores, factories uh, that are effectively shuttered. China is incredibly important in terms of the strength of the world economy. But what's different with this is it's not just a local uh, economic shock in China. It is a shock that's going to be felt uh, throughout the world. And we're seeing other countries like Italy, Korea, Japan, all taking a hit as a result of this. So the same problem that's happening in China, other countries are exposed to. We focus on this type of risk, and this is the type of risk that leads to decreased economic activity. So this could be the nudge or the push that puts us into a recession. Understood.
And to, just to be clear, given everything we've talked about, you believe that the cryptocurrency market uh, will follow into will follow the stock market into that recession, correct? So, given what we've seen, where we've had a major correction in the stock market, which is clearly driven by a risk-off uh, type of trade, where people are de-risking, selling stocks, going into a safe haven asset like the 10-year US Treasury bond. Given that we've seen that, a major event that we can actually understand, we understand the reason why. Often, when the stock market goes up or down, we don't really know why. But in this particular situation, we know why. So given that the risk has increased, stock market uh, has taken a battering, and at the same time, the crypto complex has taken a battering. That is consistent with a positive correlation with the stock market in a crisis event. And that's very important. So we've got a crisis event, we see a positive correlation, stocks go down, cryptos go down. So given that we've seen that in a very important event over the last uh, week, um, that would mean to me that in the future, if we have a similar sell-off in the stock market, a similar risk-off type of trade, that the crypto complex is at risk. Thank you everyone for watching. My name is Jackson, and that was Professor Campbell Harvey. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to like, subscribe, and hodl. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.